Hey guys, it's Alex here from Home Eat. In today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at the Yale Linus Smart Lock. And if you're on the market for smart locks, this is a, well, well worth your time to take a look at this video and have a look at how this lock works and operates and how it connects to Home Eat and what you can do with Home Eat connecting it to other smart devices in your home. Now, I'm also gonna take a look at the Connect Wi-Fi bridge that comes with it from Yale and the keypad that they have. Now the Connect Wi-Fi bridge is an essential accessory since it, well, it bridges the connection from Bluetooth in the lock to your Wi-Fi at home and then gives you remote access. Plus it allows you to connect it up to Homey, which, well, basically adds it into the rest of your smart home and means that you don't have to swap between multiple apps when you're trying to have devices work together. And I'm gonna show off a couple of flows that I have to do exactly that, have these devices work together. Before we get into that, let me show you real quick a little bit how the lock operates, what it looks like, and well, not really an installation video, but have a look at how you can install this in your home. Now, first off, the lock comes in a couple of variants. So the one I have here is called the Euro cylinder type lock, and that's because it fits on, well, Euro cylinders. And you also have a Scandinavian variant, and I believe another variant for other markets. So make sure that you take a look at the product you're purchasing, if you're looking to buy this lock, that it fits on your door. And Yale has a compatibility page for this smart lock, so you can make sure that it does fit on the door you have. So first off, I wanna cover sort of the installation, or let's say simplistic installation of the smart lock. Let me remove it from the door here. I've removed the actual, well, locking mechanism. I'm gonna put it to one side. And you'll see that on the door, there's a mounting bracket. This mounting bracket is attached via three screws or double-sided tape that comes with the package. So depending a little bit on your door and if this fits properly, you may need to use the double-sided tape. And if you're lucky enough, you can use the mounting screws that come with it. And there's three on each side and you just sort of tighten it up onto your Euro cylinder. Now bear in mind that you will require the key to be in the door in order to have the lock interact with the key, unlock and open the door. Now, this is a great moment to mention that from a security point of view, it's important that your door can open from both sides when the key is in it. So you basically don't wanna be locked out if the lock runs out of battery or is not operating for some reason. And that means that you wanna be able to access your door from both sides using a key. Now, for instance, this door cylinder is too short for a key to be stuck in both sides and still operate the lock. Now, Yale does have an adjustable cylinder that you can purchase and install on your door to make sure that this is, well, working from both sides so that you can stick in the key from the front, unlock the door when you need to. Now, some doors already have this feature if they have a long enough cylinder to be able to fit both keys. So if you're looking to install this lock, double check that and then see, hey, do I need to purchase this adjustable cylinder to fit this lock on my door? Now with the mounting bracket installed, it's actually a really easy process of adding on the Linus lock. You literally slide it over the key and then clip in these two brackets on the side here. And once that's done, your lock's installed. And let me quickly show you how you can replace the batteries. So there's a Yale branded circle here at the bottom. And if I press in the top, <laughs> this slides out and it's just held on by magnets. And then you'll see four AA batteries here. And that way you can easily replace the batteries if you have to. And according to Yale, under normal usage, this has a battery life of about six to nine months. Let me replace that. And now let me show you the lock in operation. So let's jump over to the Yale app here. And when you're setting up the smart lock, you're gonna to wanna to install the Yale Access app, create an account, and basically calibrate and connect your lock up to your Wi-Fi connect bridge that I have down here. And it's simply a, well, a little router device with a button on it. And it's relatively small form factor. And you can make sure that you plug this in full time somewhere close to your front door or back door or wherever you're installing the lock, just in a close proximity since it worked via Bluetooth. Once you've gone through that process, calibrated the lock and set it all up, you'll have access to it in the Yale Access app. And here you can, well, lock the door. Or if I tap on it again, you can unlock the door. Now in the Yale Access app, you have a couple of features. You can basically set up the lock to your liking. So there are some settings that you can access and I'll jump into them quickly here. So let me have a quick look at some of the lock settings you receive. 
You can turn on and off the lock sounds. You can set up auto locking, auto unlocking features, and you can set up door sense. And door sense is, well, really simply, a little magnet that you install on the side of the door that does not open. And then the Yale Linus lock knows, hey, is the door open, closed, or is it slightly ajar? So you can basically be notified if you're locking the door, but the door isn't properly closed. And sometimes that happens. You maybe you'll walk away, the door's not properly closed. It locks itself. You think, hey, the house is secure, but actually your door is slightly open and the lock didn't quite close inside the door. So this is a great little feature and well worth setting up. Now the little magnet comes with the Linus lock, so you can make sure that you set this up for yourself. Now, the great thing is that this door sense functionality is also accessible in the Homey integration. So once you have the lock connected up to Homey, you can use flows to also track whether the door is open or closed and then be notified of any occurrences or if the door is locking while being open, that sort of thing. You can set up flows for this. All right, enough about the Yale access side of things. I wanna jump into the Homey side of things. So what I'll do is connect up the lock to Homey. If I search for Yale, you'll see there's a Yale Access app here. And bear in mind, this is a verified partner app. So in collaboration with Yale, we've set this up and we are assured that this does work with the Yale Linus lock, along with a few other Yale Access connectable locks that are on the market. So we have the Yale Access app, we've selected the device, and now we can connect up my lock. Here you'll be prompted to log in with your Yale Access account. So let me do that and then share your Yale Access account with Homey. So I'm gonna tap on Agree, hit Done in the top left, and then select the lock I'm looking to pair. Now I have the Yale Linus lock integrated with Homey. And that means that I can now create flows and connections between the other smart devices I have in my home. And this is great for a smart lock. So you can imagine flows like, okay, if the door is unlocked, I want my lights to turn on. I want my temperature to be set to a certain setting. And I maybe want some soft music playing on my smart speakers. You can easily set that up using a flow. Alternatively, you can do things like, well, if you have a smart video doorbell, you can be notified when the doorbell goes off. You can be sent a snapshot of who is at the door. And then you can offer remote access by unlocking the door, even if you're not at home and have that person perhaps drop off a package, uh, maybe come in to clean the home. Depends a little bit on who your guest is, but you can set that up within Homey relatively easily. Now let me dive into the lock itself and I'll show off a couple of the controls you get in the Homey app. Here, simply, I can lock the door by tapping on lock. You'll see that the lock almost immediately locks itself. If I swipe to the right, you'll see a status overview of, well, what status is the lock in? And you'll see that this updates if I change the status of the lock. Now, you could also manually adjust it. So this is gonna be on the inside of your home. So let's say you wanna leave, you don't have your phone on you, or quick, you can, well, simply just turn the lock and it'll unlock. And then if you wanna leave the home, you can open up the door. Now you'll see that also update in the Homey app. So you can also have flows triggered based on manual events happening with the lock. And for some homes, it's important to be able to open the door when you're on the outside trying to get in to open this latch. Here you can just tap on open. This will temporarily open up the door so that you have access to your home. Let me swipe to the right. And here you'll see the door sense function. So simply this little magnet, if I move this away from the lock, so simulating that the door opens, you'll see that the door state sets itself to open. Now, if I set the magnet back against the door, you'll see that the door state will update again to a closed state. And this is a great way just to stay on top of if your front door is open or closed. And then also to know whether it's unlocked, locked, and when it's being open. Swipe to the right once more, you'll see a battery status indicator. And here you'll be notified if your battery is low. You can set up flows to send yourself a push notification to be alerted to that fact when it happens. And let's swipe once more to the right and you'll see that you can create a flow. Now I should mention here, you also have the device timeline. So you can double check, hey, when was my door last used? When has that been unlocked? When was it locked? And see which users and how they're interacting with the lock at that time. So now that I have the lock connected up to Homey, the fun can start. And you can start creating flows to have this work seamlessly with the rest of your smart home. So you stop having to interact with it or grab your mobile device and tap on devices and control them, but have flows well, set up the home in the way you want it. 
Now I've set up a couple of simple flows. Let me head into flows. And you'll see that under my Yale lock folder, I have a couple of flows for this lock. Now, in case you didn't know, flows have a folder structure. So you can add folders for certain flows just to keep things a little bit organized. So for instance, if I tap now on the Yale lock folder, you'll only see the flows in that folder. And to assign a flow to a certain folder, just go into the flow, tap on the settings in the top right, and then select the folder you want to be using. It's that simple. So let me quickly show you the front door lock flow. And it's a really simple one. It says this flow started, so it's a manually triggered flow. Great for if you're using widgets or a smartwatch and you have flows that are easily triggerable on that. You can quickly trigger this flow to lock the door. So let's give this a quick test by hitting the play button. You'll see that the smart lock locks itself. Now you may want to add a few conditions to a flow like this. So for instance, I want to make sure this flow only triggers when nobody's at home. So I'm going to head into it. In the and section, an and just means a condition that you're adding to it. So if that condition is not met, the flow won't continue. So you have a when event, this flow is started, and your condition, in this case, nobody is home, head into presence, select nobody is home. So when the flow is started, and nobody is at home, then the lock will lock. Now, I also wanna to add to this flow that all the lights in my home will turn off. Since nobody's at home, my front door is locking, I wanna make sure that the lights are off to conserve some energy. You can really easily do this in Homey. So in the then area, I'm gonna add a new car. And under home, I'm gonna say, turn all devices off. Now, don't worry, we don't mean all smart devices unless you want to. You can actually specify which type of devices you want to be turning off. So I can turn off all wall plugs, all the lights, all the fans, all the heaters, coffee machines, kettles, TVs, all these different types of devices that you have in your smart home. You can turn them off really quickly using a flow card like this. Now let me save the flow, head back, and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to unlock the door once more, and I'm going to set myself as a way. So you'll see in the timeline notifications here, Alex Smith left the house. So now I'm not home and my door is unlocked. So let's head over to that flow and hit play. Now you'll see that my door locks. And if I head over to devices, you'll see that all the lights, you can see these on the device tiles here, my bedside light, main lights, film studio, hallway light, all of the lights in my home have now been turned off. Now this is a great moment to talk about the Yale keypad. And this is a nice little accessory to add to the lock if you want pin code access to your home and you can set up pin codes for various users, let's say your in-laws or cleaners or the mailman to make sure they have access and you can, well, create access on certain days and then remove access for other times, other days and basically set that up all in Homey and create flows for this. So it can be an automatic process. Let me jump into my flows and I'll show you a flow I have called create pin code. And you'll see that I have a pin being added for the code one, two, three, four. So let me save this flow and then trigger it. Now in the back side of things, a pin code has been generated for one, two, three, four. So if I type in one, two, three, four, then hit the Yale icon you'll see that the door lock unlocks, opens up, and then I can access the home. Now, last but not least, let me show you one of my favorite flows, and that's really just a welcome home flow. So what I wanna have is when the door unlocks, that the lights turn on and some soft music plays. It's really simple to set up, and I'm gonna show you real quick how to do it. In this case, I'm gonna say the flow triggers when the lock unlocks. So I'm gonna select unlocked. And I'm going to add some conditions here. I want this flow only to trigger when I get home after work. So I'm going to say that it's date and time. The time is between, and I'm going to say between five o'clock and seven o'clock. I'll select the today is a dot, 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 then select weekday from this list. 
You can have it on certain days if you want that. In this case, a weekday. And in the then section, I'm gonna say um, that my lights in my hallway turn on. So let's go into the ground floor, hallway, turn all devices on and then select specifically all lights. And I'm gonna have my music play. So I wanna select play a Sonos favorite and then select one of my favorite playlists. In this case, I'll say my hit list. And if you have a smart thermostat connected up to Homey, you can also add this and set the temperature for when you're coming home. Now you can set the temperature or you can resume your smart schedule, which is really handy. So if you have a smart schedule set up and that turns on the heating, let's say at 4.30 before you get home, but you're working late, well then it's a bit useless to have your home heating up while you're working late. So if you're coming home past six o'clock, you've basically been heating up your home, keeping it warm for about two hours when you didn't have to. So in this case, I can resume my start schedule. And that means that, well, the Tato will be alerted to the fact that I'm coming home because the door is unlocking, and then it will set up the heating in my home to start happening. Now, don't forget to save the flow. I'm gonna say door unlocks after work, and I'll hit save. What I'll do is I'll share this flow as it is down in the description below. In this case, you'll see that after the unlock process is done, that my light turns on and my Sonos starts playing some music and my Tato thermostat is set to a nice temperature. Now, remember, every flow with Homey is unique to every house. So in this case, I had my hallway lights turn on. You can also have your ground floor lights turn on. You can have your smart curtains open up. There are all kinds of different flow events you can have happen when your front door unlocks. And that's the great thing about connecting a lock like this to Homey, is that you can extend basically the use cases and well, scenarios, those flow events that you're creating to integrate with the rest of your smart devices. Now, if you wanna learn more about Homey, make sure to check out the link down in the description below, head to our website and basically browse through all the different apps we have, the different devices that we offer and see how you can create a better smart home for yourself. Now remember, if you enjoy these videos, you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button down below, helps us out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, all that kind of thing. And well, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Now, if you made it this far in the video, perhaps you're interested in the Yale line of smart lock. And right now to celebrate the verified partner program and Yale becoming a verified partner on Homey, we actually have a special deal going that bundles up the smart lock with the connect Wi-Fi bridge that you need to bridge that connection to Homey. And that bundle price, I think, saves you about 60 euros off of retail. So it's well worth checking out. And the link's down in the description below so that you can go ahead and purchase that if you want to. Now, bear in mind that the offer we have going is for the Euro cylinder variant of this lock. So if you're based in Scandinavia or other regions, make sure to check out the Yale compatibility filter before you purchase and see which lock you need. And if you're looking for a more regional lock, so Scandinavia, make sure to check with local retailers for that variation of the lock. Now I'll see you guys in the next video.